everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. In the interest of time, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started um, to try and leave as much time for Q&A at the end. So thanks very much for joining us in this talk about recurring dates and a smarter way to approach them in Drupal. So my name is Martin Anderson Klutz on Drupal.org and various social platforms. I go by Manclue and I'm a solutions architect at Digital Echidna. So in addition to today's talk, we're also going to be doing a bit of a live demo. So starting um, with a fresh install of Drupal 9, which you can see here. Um, basically stock did also install Olivero and the uh, Jin admin theme. If you're not familiar with Jin, it's sort of a, I would say an enhanced version of Claro. And so, um, if you wanted to sort of follow along, this is a very basic way to install just Drupal 9. What we're gonna be using looks like a little bit more like this in terms of the commands to install these. Uh, the notes are available in the chat. I'll also try and remember to post them again later and I've also uh, posted them on Twitter. So lots of ways to get these if you decide you wanna just uh, use them later. And if you really wanna geek out, you can chain these into like one long command. Um, and that's kind of what I've done for my install. So um, let's flip over to a console and we can see this is the result of that command. And now to install our system for handling recurring dates, we're gonna go composer, fire, Drupal, smart, date, kit. And wanted to kick that off first because this is still using Composer 1, so it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, looking forward to when Composer 2 is fully ready. So um, with that, let's dive right in. We're meant to talk about recurring events um, and in particular, um, some ways to manage them within Drupal. So uh, definitely recurring events is a common use case. Um, I would say that not all of the sites we build at Digital Echidna that have event management within them require um, recurring events, but it is pretty common in the calendar applications that your site editors and content authors are using on a daily basis. And so it's, it's pretty common to get requests for this type of functionality. The interfaces will vary a little bit between, let's say, Google Calendar, um, your Apple Calendar, Microsoft Outlook and, and various others. But when you think about it, the particularly the recurring functionality has a lot in common. So uh, this is pretty common, um, being able to have dates that occur sort of daily, weekly, monthly, or annually, being able to set which days that it recurs on and to set some kind of an end, either based on the number of recurrences or on an end date. And worth mentioning um, that a lot of these applications actually use this our rule format as sort of a data interchange format. So either um, directly in terms of how they actually store those recurring dates, or in some cases they may use a more custom storage method, but use that as a way to sort of import or export. So if you get really deep into the weeds, it may um, benefit you at some point to understand our rule. We're gonna cover it uh, in not a lot of detail because this is a shorter session. Uh, but the key things that are gonna be in your R rule typically are going to be, you know, again, frequency, uh, some kind of limit as an optional, you know, again, either based on the number of recurrences or an end date, um, an interval. So whether it's every other week, every three weeks, every six months, um, those kinds of things. And then there are more complicated options to, to really give it some more robust functionality and, and map to uh, real, real world ways that people want to have things recur that are more complicated. So here are a couple of examples of sort of, you know, what the R rule looks like, which is not super friendly, and then a more sort of human friendly way of representing that recurrence rule. Um, again, in the interest of time, I'm not gonna dive too much into those. Um, in case you're wondering, this table kind of is meant to frighten you because there is a lot of complexity. So when you start to layer on some of those additional options and understand that, that how they interact with your recurrence rule in terms of whether they restrict or expand the number of instances will actually change based on what the frequency is in terms of um, your recurrence rule. 
you start to to get an appreciate appreciation of how complex this this can start to be you know from a complexity standpoint how deep the rabbit hole goes and um so you know you layer on all of those complexities about the r rule on top of that you could layer on time zones daylight savings times leap years um you know exceptions and overrides and then even on the output side regional formatting in terms of differences between the way different languages prefer to represent uh, dates and times so you start to really understand there's a ton of complexity that you may start to run into and and so fortunately um there are a number of ways within the Drupal, the Drupal space that we can make managing these things much easier and so the one that we're going to talk the most about today is smart date but then later on we'll, we'll also talk about some other options so Smart Date was a module that I started working on um, now about a year and a half ago. Uh, but the idea came to me, uh, actually years ago, I was working on an event-based website and populating some content and started to realize how incredibly tedious it was to populate this content. So you can see when you have sort of your standard um, date fields, you've got um, for each of the start and end, uh, seven different fields to populate. So year, month, day, hours, minutes, seconds, and then AM or PM, and then you know go through the same process to populate your end dates. Um, and so that's a lot of entry for, for each and every date that you have to put in. And so I started to reflect on what is it that uh, calendar applications do to make that process much easier? And, and fundamentally, there are two things that they do to make it much easier. So first off, uh, they will default to, um, to the next hour. So you get sort of a more clean, uh, starting date. Typically, you're not going to schedule something for, you know, 9.07 a.m. Um, you're going to schedule it for 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. And so uh, rounding that up to the next hour definitely makes it easier. And then also it has this or they have this concept of duration. So typically it's a uh, will default to a one hour duration. Lots of them give you an option to change that default in terms of the duration. Um, but really just by saying you wanna create an event, it populates a very clean set of fields and you may only need to change two or three to actually have um, the, the sort of event definition that you want. So those are a couple of the things that I started to realize, okay, if we could build those into Drupal, it would make the process much easier. And then a couple of other things that I'll point out in these interfaces is you can see another common thing is this all day checkbox. And we had, oh, must've done a gesture there. Um, been getting question or requests for clients to build those into their websites in some cases in ways that were fairly um, custom and actually introduced a lot of complexity in terms of managing some of those events uh, even though from a, I'll say a user side it the idea was to make it simple it actually made the the site build a lot more complex um, again repeating functionality as something that's in there and then also actually in the Google example you'll notice that it has uh, the capability to manage time zones so really from an editor experience, wanted to, to try and draw on some of those ways that calendar apps make the uh, date entry a lot simpler, um, including things like the all day checkbox. And then also to try and provide more natural output for date ranges. So um, if somebody was to say, hey, what time is that recurring dates field um, or recurring dates in Drupal talk going to be at uh, Bad Camp, I wouldn't say, oh, well, it's going to be uh, Friday, October 16th from uh, 9 a.m. to Friday, October 16th at uh, 9.45 a.m. Obviously, I would only say the date once and then give the time range. And so we had been similarly getting question, or requests from clients to provide that same kind of deduplication in the output, again, often using some custom methods that might involve, let's say, uh, some logic built into the twig template, uh, maybe also uh, some logic in the preprocessor, but but things that we're having to sort of build again and again. So I started to think, well, maybe these are our pieces that should be built together to, to make it easier to manage dates in Drupal. And then the last piece was I was getting a site ready to launch, did a crawl to see if there were any slights or slow pages, and by far the slowest page, uh, surprisingly, was an events archive page that really had almost no data. And so when I looked at the query that Views was building, I could see that um, there was a lot of complexity introduced by the fact that Drupal's core date time and date time range fields store um, dates and times as strings. And so to be able to do a comparison, so for example, to say, show me only the events that happened in the past 
it actually has to row by row convert those into um, a different format to be able to sort of make that logical comparison. So um, also wanted to, to do something that could address that kind of a performance issue. And so at that point I realized I needed to create a module that would address you know, the user experience, the performance, and also the output format. And so the approach that I took in building the module was really as much as possible to leverage some of the you know, excellent code and well-tested code that's already within Drupal. So there is a date range a field in there. It has an HTML5 uh, date time picker uh, with fallbacks. And um, then from the performance side, there, there is actually a lot of code already in Drupal core for using timestamps. So if you're looking at your node creation or update intervals or the last time your user was logged in, those are all stored as timestamps. And so there's a lot of code already within Drupal uh, for managing timestamps and also converting from, you know, date time objects to uh, timestamps or vice versa. And so um, by leveraging timestamps, I was able to address kind of the, the storage and performance side without really having to write um, a lot of custom code at all. Um, and so that that proved to be really effective. But but definitely recurring dates was was early on one of the things that was requested um, for smart date. And we'll we'll talk more in depth later on about how the approach that smart day uses is is maybe different from particularly some of the ones that came before um but for now we'll just say decided to to attach the the instances as the pieces that are sort of uh show up as um kind of field deltas uh attached directly to your node with the the actual r rule storage being uh the, the piece that's abstracted away um, which meant that from an output standpoint, we didn't have to do a lot of, you know, extra custom things, um, but, but really just tried to provide some uh, custom formatters to um, optimize the display of those recurring dates. So um, we'll get into a little bit um, more about this during the demo, but, but really to, to provide in a way that uh, hopefully gives users the information in a way that that's most useful to them. And then uh, sort of the last big piece that, that has been developed over time on Smart Date is really calendar integration. So, um, as this was being discussed, it actually came from the community the suggestion that full calendar view was maybe uh, the best supported calendar um, module in the sort of Drupal ecosystem. And so, originally wrote the integration as a patch for full calendar view, but the maintainer of that module actually created kind of a plugin system so that other modules could do sort of data transformation before it the data gets uh, passed into the, uh, the full calendar on the front end. And so now Smart Date and Full Calendar View work together seamlessly. And that includes drag and drop support, the ability to sort of double click to add events. And again, this is all things that we'll see in the demo, but important for this conversation is the fact that because of some of the pragmatic approaches that Smart Date tries to take for recurring uh, events, the support for showing recurring events in the calendar works sort of seamlessly and out of the box. And then uh, kind of the last piece that I want to talk about uh, in terms of the evolution of smart date is this idea of starter kits. So in a way similar to uh, the idea of what a feature is, but, but maybe a bit different in approach, it's really just pre-bundled set of, of configuration. The idea is that it can get you running quickly, but then you sort of build on and extend and customize from there. It's not really something that you're meant to like install and then you know, sort of install updates over time. It's really to get you started. And then that becomes either, you know, the thing that you use to test or something that you build on and customize and add complexity to sort of meet your individual use cases from there. So um, if you use the base smart date starter kit, it creates an event content type and a view to show upcoming and past events. And really not a lot else that, you know, the idea being that you add the complexity to, to meet your individual use case from there. There's also a calendar kit that on top of that adds a, um, a full calendar based view and, um, and really embeds a few ideas in terms of what I think are best practices, not only in terms of how users will see the data, but, but even in terms of create, creating a really solid admin experience. And, and we'll talk a little bit about that as we go on. But um, these are as I say, my ideas in terms of what makes a good sort of um, visitor and admin experience. But if you have different ideas, definitely welcome to issue our sorry, feature requests or uh, patches. So definitely go into the issue queue for the appropriate starter kit. So with that, let's go back to our 
command line, we can see that the modules have been installed. So let's go, uh, actually, before we do that, let me just uh, show you. This is our base install. Let's quickly log in so that I can show you, sort of validate that this is um, really just has our default content types there. And the only differences really are the themes that we've installed. So now let's go and install in. Ask us to confirm because there's a few modules there. And then once that's done, we go to our homepage now. It looks the same, but now we can add an event. And so now what we're seeing is the, the smart date interface. So let's just give this test event. You can see that it has uh, this duration idea. It has our all day checkbox. It does, it's uh, rounded this up. So, you know, I'm in Eastern time, so it's 12.17. It's defaulted to the next hour. If we do things like change the start date, it will automatically update the end appropriately. Um, and then it preserves this idea of duration. So we can change the duration there. And then once again, if we uh, change the start date, it will appropriately um, update the end to reflect the uh, sort of selected duration. And you can also customize it. So we could say 8.30, 10.30, and it'll automatically update the duration. So it gives you as the you know editor or content author a lot of flexibility. Let's go ahead and add a couple more instances just so that we can demonstrate. Some of the formatting options. Keyboard. There we go. 10, 16, let's go 30 p.m. And then let's add some all day dates. So let's go. We can use a calendar picker and let's do a couple more quickly. probably enough for now. So let's dive in and see what the result is. So you can see right away that it's it's done what we talked about. So the, it only shows the date once if it starts and ends on the same date. Obviously, if it, if it crosses over into the next date, then it, it uh, repeats the, the date as needed. Same thing with AM and PM. It tries to deduplicate those. And uh, another thing you may notice is that it gives you the option to show a different format for um, times that fall directly on the hour. Um, for all day events, you optionally can show sort of a label for that. Um, and then it does some, some duplication, a deduplication for dates. Um, but it's more complicated to do that when you actually include the day of the week. So let's go ahead and alter our event display settings to sort of show this in a way that's uh, going to reflect a little better. So we've got our smart date formatter. Uh, these it ships with some different ones out of the box. It's smart date formats, but you can create your own. Let's switch it to this compact one. Let's save that. And now when we refresh our events, you can see this one doesn't include any kind of an all day um, token. Again, the idea being to make it as compact as possible. Um, and this one more clearly illustrates how the date ranges. Uh, become a lot cleaner in terms of how they're presented. Uh, one thing, a bug that I noticed as, as part of preparing for this presentation is the compact one actually doesn't include a uh, token for uh, the time on the hour. So we can go ahead and show how we can update that. I will say that these in an upcoming version of Smart Date that will be fixed. Um, but for today, that's easy enough to fix ourselves. And we'll show how that's done. So Smart Date formats 
are similar to core uh, date formats in the sense that they're really based on PHP date strings, um, but a lot more granular. So in this case, we've got date and time. Optionally, you can have a time on the hour as something different. So we're gonna go ahead and just take out the minutes. And other than that, um, we'll point out, you can. here's where you can have your all day label. You can customize the separator uh, within the range as well as what's used to separate the date and time and which comes first. Uh, worth noting that there are differences even in terms of what's preferred uh, between languages. So the um, some of the preferred, uh, for example, German formatting is very different from English in terms of, uh, I think it's, it's quite typically date first, whereas in uh, a number of particularly English language uh, cultures, it tends to be more um, date first, or sorry, uh, time first. And so you can also, the deduplication, if it isn't working well for you, you can turn that off. Uh, if you're using a custom time zone for an event, it will by default output the site time at the end in brackets or parentheses, um, but you can turn that off if that's also something you don't want. So let's go ahead and just uh, save that one change to our smart date format. And now you can see that um, it has updated and it's it's giving us that, that cleaner output. And worth noting that the smart date formats, uh, another advantage of using those is that they are more reusable. So between content types, between content types and views, um, they're exported as config. So you could potentially even, you know, reuse them across sites if you wanted to do that kind of thing. And they're also translatable. So again, you can have a compact format that um, also uh, adheres to sort of best practices in, you know, not only English, but also French and German and, and sort of customized for, for each of those sort of cultural norms. So let's uh, quickly switch back. Uh, we've covered all of these. Let's talk about uh, time zones. So in terms of the actual widget here, this is the standard one. I will mention passing that as a smart date three, you can actually use this widget with um, core date time range fields. If you, if you don't wanna use the custom smart date storage, um, and or potentially maybe you've got an existing site that already has a lot of um, content using core uh, date time range fields and just want to use the uh, the widget. Uh, that's definitely possible as a smart date three. Um, but let's go ahead and use the um, date time and range with time zone formatter for our um, our new field. So um, I'll point out that by default. Um, it will give you sort of your, your Drupal standard list of all of the time zones in the world. Um, but there was a question raised actually at a, at a similar talk, uh, or I guess more just generally specifically about smart date earlier this year, where somebody asked if it was possible to customize the list of these time zones that are exposed. And at the time the answer was no, but it was actually not terribly hard to implement that. So as of um, more recent versions of smart date, you can go in uh, select a couple of these. Let's say we want to add, uh, let's say, Denver and Chicago. So suppose our um, site only needs to support a small handful of time zones, then uh, we can go in and now if we go into edit our event, we can see that we have our time zone field and it's a much simpler experience for our editors to go in and assign those time zones based on the ones that our site actually needs to manage as opposed to potentially um, much uh, more difficult or complex to manage um, broader set. So all of that being said, again, we're here to talk more about, um, about recurring dates. So let's go ahead and enable the smart date recur submodule. That's enabled and then um, what we need to do then is update our field because smart date doesn't ass assume that you want all fields to be uh, recurring or enabled for uh, recurring events. So it's really something you have to uh, in your field, go in and enable. So we're going to say we want to allow uh, recurring events. It will add this um, months to extend. So because the uh, end is optional, um, I didn't want smart date. If you said I have an event that is going to happen every day, I didn't want it to 
go ahead and just start generating instances until the end of time or until your database blows up, um, but to be able to put some kind of an intelligent limit on that. So it defaults to 12 months if you have um, something that's around planning, you know, events farther out that maybe only occur, you know, annually or uh, monthly, then maybe you want to set this higher. If you have something that's primarily for um, daily events, you may want to set this shorter to, again, keep the, the size of the data being generated smaller, but uh, something you can easily customize. So let's go ahead and save that. And then now if we reload our interface, you can see now we have the ability to make these uh, recurring. So you can say, you know, let's make it every other week on Monday and Thursday, or we could say I want to make it every two months on the um, third Thursday. Um, all of those things that are, I would say, notionally somewhat complex are very easy to, to sort of create and manage within the smart data interface. Um, so let's actually um, keep our current event, but make a new one. So let's just say um, events. Have it start on Monday, and let's have that set to be current weekly. Let's end after ten occurrences, and that does have to be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So, having set that up, you can see it's generated our ten instances, and. Um, that works reasonably well if you've got a small number of instances, but if you have something that's going to be recurring, you know, every week for the next 12 months, um, that may get a bit unwieldy. And so, uh, actually, look here. let's go back to our display tab. Now, if we refresh, we can see that it, we actually have a couple of extra formatters. So there's a one specifically for recurring, as well as a daily range, which is uh, similar to the one that we've just uh, seen, which is the smart date formatter. Um, but has a little bit of tuning in there. So if you have daily ranges, it will show those in a more compact way. Let's go ahead and, and use our recurring one. Look at the options that it gives us. So um, by default, it will allow you to show a specified number of recent and upcoming instances. So you could say, here are the next three times that's gonna happen and leave that at zero if you don't wanna show any in the past. Um, you can also do things like say, let's show the next one um, as, as a more prominent field, which, which sort of makes sense because somebody coming to your website is probably most interested in, in which one is coming up next. So let's go ahead and update that and save it. And now if we refresh this, um, it actually adds classes around these. So um, you can theme these to be more prominent, but out of the box, it just keeps them separate. Uh, so we have our, our next occurrence and then uh, it will show a number after that. Um, I think we only had that set as two, and it takes counts the next one as one of those. So uh, we could do something like set this as four if we wanted to show the next, as well as another three. So let's refresh and look at that, and you can see that. All of this output is in a twig template. And so within your theme, you can easily customize these. If you don't like the way it puts these in a details element, you want to change the order, um, potentially any of those kinds of things. So it really gives you a lot of control in terms of how to customize those. And um, let's also talk about the calendar integration that we talked about. So you can see uh, just having installed that, um, that starter kit, we have a working calendar. Um, from an admin standpoint, you've got this um, link that it, it provides directly on the calendar to make it easy and intuitive in terms of how to add events. Um, if I'm looking at a calendar, it makes sense uh, to provide that option in context. And then I will say that, that for me, the calendar display is not necessarily always an efficient way to allow visitors to sort of browse and navigate content, particularly if you only had two or three a month, you would be able to to communicate a lot more in the same real estate um, by showing more of, let's say, a te teaser-based view where you could have an image, 
uh, you could talk about location and provide other other types of information. But um, particularly for content editors to be able to sort of visualize when content is happening um, and potentially be able to manage those, um, this becomes a really great tool. So I can do something like drag and drop. Um, I have it configured to require a notification, but you can disable that if you don't feel like you need those. And then we can also go in and do things like reschedule within a date or potentially even change the duration. So all of that is um, very easy to do in a drag and drop way, super intuitive for your um, editors. And again, really lines up with a lot of the calendar software that they're using already um, in you know, other parts of their daily lives to, to manage this type of information. And we can also double click and you'll see that it has preserved not only the day, but the time at which we clicked. And we'll say, create event, that, it will take us back to our calendar. And if we go in there, we can see that it's, it's saved that and it's now displaying where we would expect it in our calendar. Also wanted to show a couple of things that are newer in Smart Dates. So let's go composer, fire, Google, Dates. And let's force it to use a newer version that is actually, oh, good. Um, so uh, one of the things, that, some feedback that I got from um, the community is that Smart Day could also be uh, used more for things like, um, you know, appointment calendars. If it had recurring on more of an hourly or um, by minute basis, um, once this gets installed, I'll be able to show you a little bit how that works. Um, again, I left it uh, disabled by default, and, and I'll show you the process of, of enabling the new options. Uh, again, because I wanted to to really preserve the out of the box behavior to be as close to some of the the calendar applications as possible. So let's give it a minute. Things are always slower while I'm streaming my video. Maybe this is a, a quick um, do a quick scan for questions. Let's see those. Um, worth pointing out that this version has a schema update, so you will see some errors that will make you unhappy if you don't run your database updates. So let's go ahead and say yes. And now let's go back to our um, widget configuration and we'll see some new options in here. So now uh, you actually have the option to uh, specify excuse me, which frequency values you want to make available. So again, that was to make these available, but not enabled by default. But theoretically, if you had an event system that you wanted to build into a website and only allow sort of, uh, let's say weekly and monthly uh, recurring values, you absolutely have the flexibility to do that. And then that becomes easier to manage from, let's say a training and support standpoint. So let's go ahead and save those new options. And now uh, let's go add a new event. And now we can see, have those new options. And we could say, I want this to recur every hour um, on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, but only from, let's say, you know, 9 a.m. to noon. Or I could say, Let's make it a 30 minute event. And if I switch to minutes by default, it recurs to the same value. I would say it's definitely an edge case where you literally want something to recur every minute. So by minutes, it defaults to your duration. And, um, but we could do something like say, we wanna have a gap in between. So let's make it every 45 minutes. Uh, let's end after instances. hour to populate. So let's go ahead and save that. Oops. 
and you can't see it as well here. So let's go ahead and change our display back to the original formatter, just so that you can see the full list and I guess validate that it's what it's generated is more in line with what you expect. So um, 30 minute events every 45 minutes, um, but only within on the days and uh, time ranges that we've specified. So hopefully that's clear. Um, starting to run a little low on time, but definitely wanted to talk about how Smart Date may be a bit different from some other modules that provide uh, recurring functionality. So definitely if you were using recurring dates in Drupal 7, you would have been using the recurring dates field. Uh, machine name is date recur. Um, at its core, it's actually really just like a text area that exposes uh, a place for an editor to put in an R rule field, which is definitely not super intuitive. Um, but there is a companion module that actually provides um, the, the sort of UI options that makes it friendlier to use. So uh, nice that it has different options, definitely something you may want to check out if there's something you see that you think smart date could benefit from. Again, definitely open to feature requests, um, patches, and so on. Uh, one thing to note about our rule is because it started off as specifically an R rule field. Um, what it's storing directly on the node is really the R rule and then uses a separate table for the instances, which can make building your views more complicated. Um, having a mixture of, let's say, recurring and uh, core events is definitely going to be very complicated to set up. Um, and also another pain point is calendars in terms of it has some integrations. A lot of them require patches or are um, modules that, that may not be um, as well maintained. So something to, to consider there. Definitely smart date we've already talked about, so I'll only cover quickly. Uh, really sort of um, ease of use and, and ease of setup was uh, has been some of the primary concerns for smart dates. Um, and then as we talked about, it really tries to store the instances as the piece that's uh, directly on the node and then um, sort of the, um, the references out to the R rule instead. And uh, the calendar integration is, is really meant to be easy out of the box and also provides that extra functionality piece. There's also another promising module called Recurring Events. If um, you haven't seen it, the maintainer, Owen Bush, did a session about it in the uh, Drupal GovCon um, camp recently. And so if this is something you're interested, by all means, check out uh, his session because it, it provides a really nice overview of, of this module and the functionality that it provides. Um, a key thing that, that's really interesting about it is that it has a submodule for registration in a way it's really built as sort of an event and registration system. Um, and so because of that, it's not like the other modules in the sense of being a field that you would attach onto a node. Uh, it really uses its own custom entities. So that's definitely something to be aware of. If you want to have, let's say, a view on your homepage that's up, you know, recent content, then it's more complicated to use something like uh, recurring events because it is those different entities. Um, so you might have to create sort of like a different node type with an entity reference or, you know, anyway, as I say, it becomes more complicated. I would say uh, it sounds like the UI is deliberately installed. So I think he wanted to make it sort of a blank canvas. Um, there has been some discussion that maybe at some point there'd be a way to integrate something like uh, smart date, at least at a widget level, but uh, you know those discussions are uh, still early on. Um, definitely one of the, the newer um, pieces in recurring events is this idea of consecutive recurring dates. Um, I would say the, uh, the by minute recurring to some degree is meant to, to have some degree of parallel to, to the same idea of recurring event dates. Um, and recurring events also currently has no time zone handling, but if I recall correctly, that was a question that came up at the GovCon session. It sounds like he's open to implementing. So if that if this is a module you want to use and that's a feature you need, then uh, then I, I would encourage you to go in and put that in as a feature request against the module. Another uh, newer module um, that is uh, probably worth touching on is called Bookable Calendar. Uh, this one uses the Smart Data interface directly. In fact, it declares it as a requirement when you install it. Again, it's built for registration. Uh, also using custom entities and um, is definitely work in progress. Currently, it only has a development release, um, but it's definitely under active development. So it's a great time 
If you like the approach and you think it's something you want to use, potentially even contribute to, uh, by all means, uh, check out the module. There is a entity relationship diagram, if I recall correctly, on the project page to help you understand sort of the, the approach that it's taking under the hood. Um, but it would be a great time if you're interested in this module to, uh, to go in and, you know, file feature requests, potentially, you know, uh, pitch in with some patches and, and those kinds of things. So uh, realize I'm running low on time, but I want to sort of graphically give you a sense of how these um, sort of three main modules, at least, um, compare in terms of their approach. So a recurring date field, as we mentioned, sort of uh, directly stores the R rule against your node and then abstracts away the instances. And so that, um, because of some of the complexity I could see, I tried to sort of go the reverse way with smart dates. So um, saving the instances directly against your node and then abstracting away the, uh, the R rule. Um, and that has definitely had some, some benefits in terms of things like calendar integration. Oh. And uh, recurring events, because it's uh, custom entity types, um, doesn't really directly attach to nodes at all. Um, but you have that uh, advantage of having the, the registration. Um, and since registration is maybe uh, a key concern in terms of which module you might want to use, I thought I should uh, quickly touch on some uh, different considerations in terms of uh, deciding what's the best approach. So uh, these are some of the questions that we'll go through um, in terms of our, our own internal decision making at Digital Echidna. So um, first off, does it actually need to be registration within Drupal. So a lot of times we'll build an integration with something like Eventbrite that can do uh, handle your e-commerce directly as well. Um, you know, a variety of other things that may have social login and, and other things. Um, so if that meets your use case, it may actually be more robust than something built in Drupal. For simple use cases, uh, you could use Webform. Webform actually has a sub-module called, I believe it's Event Registration Demo. Um, that has some really good functionality. I think even notifications, there's not anything in there for enforcing like a, um, a number of seats available and then sort of counting that down. Um, but if that's something you wanna take on, by all means, either submit that as a patch to web form or as a new module, and I would love to see that myself. Uh, for more, more complex use cases, you could look at something like recurring events that we talked about or take a look at bookable calendar. And then if uh, you need something really super complex, um, there are more robust modules, uh, bookable entities anywhere, event and registration or booking and available, booking and availability management tools, which is a mouthful. I don't know why three letter acronyms are so popular in this space, but that seems to be a thing. So to wrap it up, um, SmartDate was really uh, built to address the primary problems of sort of the editor experience, um, the speed and performance of your website, and then the format um, to sort of help your visitors parse the information more easily. Um, but along the way, tried to build in a lot of things to make your job easier as a site builder. So managing recurring dates, interactive calendars, and time zones um, really easily and out of the box, as we've seen with the demo that we literally installed uh, while we've been here. So I think we're, we're pretty close to time. Uh, wanted to end by saying, you know, there's some great sessions coming up in the next time slot. And if there are questions, um, by all means, would be happy to try and answer those now. Okay, I've been taking notes of the questions. Shall I just start reading them out? Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see. Rick Pine asked, any support for recurring events that aren't on a pattern, or the, like where the dates are random? And I know you demoed that a bit. Sure. Um, so there's a couple of things. Um, let me say for if they're, I guess you could say if they're recurring, but not on a pattern, then in a way they're really just multi-valued. Um, so let's go and create an event. And so you could just say, let's make this an all day event. And then you could make another one that is you know, at some point in the future. So let's say sometime in November, but a completely different date. And you could just sort of create different ones. If there isn't a pattern, then I don't know how to how you translate that into logic. Um, but you could, by all means, just add um, you know extra sort of field deltas to to represent what those are um, in sort of a non uh, non patterned way. Hopefully that makes sense. Cool, cool. And it looks like he feels your you answered it so brilliant. 
Okay. Uh, Dan Kohler asks, is Smart Date available for Drupal 7? Smart Date is not available for Drupal 7. Um, I will say that, uh, and this is maybe a bit of a tangent, that there was an issue someone started about um, um, doing a migration. So there's there's code in there if you're migrating from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 uh, to help migrate from, let's say, the Drupal 7 date field into uh, Smart Date in Drupal 8. Um, I believe there is a duration field uh, module that may work for Drupal 7, but uh, but no, from from day one, uh, Smart Date has been sort of Drupal 8 and newer, and it is ready for Drupal 9, I'll say. Okay, next question. Uh, Lindsay McLennan asks, is Smart Date compatible with the calendar module? So um, the calendar module, so there are, I, as last time I checked, I think there are at least three different calendar modules in uh, in Drupal 8. The calendar module, I think when I was wor working on the calendar integration, had not been updated in a while, and the um, the suggestion from the community was that full calendar view was really the um, the best one to go with, and so that's really where I focused my efforts. So if you look at full calendar view, um, this is the module that uh, has the plugin system that really allows SmartDate to work with it out of the box without it using any kind of a patch. Um, I think there's at least one other module that uses the full calendar uh, JavaScript library, and I believe the calendar module uh, uses its its own sort of more custom uh, piece. But uh, the the calendar integration that we we looked at is really using this module as opposed to the you know uh, the calendar project. Alrighty, Sean Diarmond asks, how does it store recurring events in the database using four day range field? Sorry, can you repeat that? How does it store recurring events in the database using the core date range field? Gotcha. Okay, so the, the, the simple answer is that it doesn't. So uh, certain parts of smart date only work with um, sort of the actual smart date field. So the time zones, the recurring events, um, definitely those, those pieces are only available if you're actually uh, using a smart date field. Um, it's really only the the widget, so um, we go, you know, that that sort of initial view that we saw. Um, this part here is is really what you get in terms of um, using it with core uh, date time range fields, and then as well, you can use the smart date formatter and smart date formats to do, you know, the deduplication and kind of natural language output. But um, but there definitely is a trade off there of. Uh, you know, by, by going to a smart date field, you, you get the extra functionality. Let's see, Benji Fisher had a question about changing the time zone. Benji, do you feel that question already got answered? I, I think that got addressed later. Okay, cool. Um, Chris Brown asks, is there any ability to throw in exceptions in date spans for holidays or facility closed days? He says he works at a museum for context. Yes, for sure there is. So let's go back to our calendar. Um, so uh, let's just open our recurring event here. Uh, in addition to managing them sort of within the calendar where it's easy to reschedule them, there's also this manage instances interface where you can do the same kinds of things in terms of saying, um, for this particular one, I want to change, you know, the start or the duration. Maybe this particular one, for whatever reason, is all day. Uh, but you could also do things like say, uh, let's remove, just cancel this one outright, and then it'll show in the list because it's technically part of the rule. Um, but it shows as uh, with a strike through, and then the ones that you've overridden um, are there, sort of italicized, so that at a glance you get a quick sense of. Uh, all of the actual instances that are part of that uh, recurrence rule, but um, you know what alterations that you've made. So if we go, let's save that now. Uh, sort of tell, trying to remember where the where it was in the pattern that we took one out. Um, I think it was every kind of in there. So hopefully that's clear. Let's see. Alyssa Hansen asks. 
Are you also able to remove the to date in the form, but leave the to time if you only allow events that start and end on the same date? Hmm. That is an interesting use case. So the idea being to, to almost make that not available and then only have um, the from and to on the time. I would say that's, that's currently not possible, um, but it's definitely something that I could try and put my head around how we could uh, make that work, maybe show them in line or something like that. Um, that sounds like maybe it would be a different, slightly different widget. Um, but if that's something you think uh, you need or have some ideas around how that should work, by all means go to the Smart Data Issue queue and follow that as a feature request. It'd definitely be something I'd be, um, I would consider for sure. Julie Fox asks, can you add a smart date to a group as opposed to a content type? Uh, add it to a, what was the word? Group, G-R-O-U-P. Oh, to a group. Um, yeah, so um, it doesn't have to be notes. Uh, definitely, I know I've tested uh, smart date with um, taxonomy terms. I know there are uh, a number of people who have used um, Smart date fields on uh, custom entities, excuse me, including the uh, the bookable calendar. So some of the more recent updates were to make smart date work better with different kinds of entities. Um, so as long as your um, your entity is fieldable, then it's definitely easy to um, should be easy to use smart date with that. The Sean Diarmond asks, does recurring work on core date range fields? Uh, currently, it does not. Uh, Lindsay McLennan asks, is the monthly calendar view responsive? Let's see. Um, monthly calendar view responsive. Um, let's see. Calendar. I feel like when I tested this before, it's sort of, I mean, it's not terrible in the sense that it you know it kind of gives you the display but again for particularly for things like um uh responsive considerations even from accessibility standpoints um this kind of a calendar view is is really not your best bet in terms of people consuming the information uh to me this is is really an awesome tool for more sort of um on the administrative side to be able to sort of uh, visualize your content and manage it. Let's see. Kyle Cook asks, if smart date is just a starting point out of the box and you build it out to a more full featured customized app, does this mean you cannot easily apply patches or updates after you've built out your calendars? Um, so I guess the, the thing to clarify there is that it, um, the, the bits that are, are the starting point are really the starter kits. So the, um, you know, the this content type that gets generated or the, um, um, you know, the views around it in terms of, you know, being able to display data or so on. Um, those don't tend to get a lot of changes. So, um, so yes, for, for those uh, configuration pieces, you wouldn't really be able to um, you know, sort of patch them or, or what have you uh, on an ongoing basis, but definitely smart date itself um, as sort of, you know, the, the field based on plugins and all those kinds of things is definitely something that you can patch and upgrade over time. Which in fact, we, we actually did as part of the demo when we went from the 3.0 version of 3.01 version and then got those additional features. Let's see. Robert Diarmond asks, is it possible to add fields to each recurring date? For instance, a separate link for each date? So currently it is not possible. I've been trying to sort of think about if there's a way that you could associate like a fieldable entity with each instance. And so that may be something in a future version of Smart Date that would allow you to do those kinds of things because I definitely feel like there is a use case for that. Um, so the, I guess the honest answer for that is not yet, but, uh, but stay tuned. Okay. Let's see. Benji Fisher's got a couple questions. First is how about import and export such as to Google calendar or iCal? 
Um, so the the sort of iCal integration, uh, I would, in all honesty, is not necessarily something that I've worked on yet, um, but definitely should be possible. Um, again, because um, the, the classes already exist sort of in core to take timestamps and turn them into like a date time object. And I expect that any modules that currently provide that kind of, you know, export to Google Calendar uh, type of functionality would probably be looking for that, that Drupal date time object. So um, if, if there's a, a case where you need that, um, I would say open a feature request and, and that's definitely something we could take a look at. Um, there was some work done, uh, I want to say a couple of months ago, around having it work with s some of the uh, modules that do like serialization of data. So if you if you had a solution where you were moving content between environments by getting it serialized, um, that should work. Okay. Benji also asks, if you add a recurring date, it makes multiple field instances or deltas. What happens if you then edit the recurrence rule? So um, if you, let's say, uh, um, you build out your set of, of it, sorry, let me, let me start out. You create your uh, recurring date. Uh, let's say it starts on a Monday and you have it recur for five times. And then you come back later and you change it to start on a Wednesday. It would, it would effectively resave all of those um, occurrences that come after. So it would shift them to Wednesdays individually in terms of um, you know how they're saved in the database. All right, looks like we're on our last one. Dan Wilga asks, is it possible to enter times without dates? We would use this for creating a class schedule view where the schedule repeats every week infinitely. And clarification, he'd like to enter a day of the week or time without specifying an actual calendar date. So currently that uh, it, that type of functionality isn't supported. Um, i trying to remember. I, I think there's been discussion about that in the issue queue. You could um, search through there. I think there are Drupal modules that are intended to manage sort of uh, times without dates, but um, I feel like that's that's maybe doesn't marry up super well to uh, the things that, that smart date is, is intended to do. So there's probably um, other modules that are better suited for that type of use case. All right. Look at that. We have two whole minutes to spare. <laughs> All right. Well, if there aren't any other questions, then, um, you know, wanted to thank everybody for attending the session. And um, as I say, if there are um, ways that you'd like SmartDate to better suit what you're trying to do, then uh, by all means, um, we'd love to hear from you in the issue queue. All right, this has been awesome. I, I'm so glad I monitored this one. Thanks, everyone.